Hello everybody, here we are today continuing on with our season previews and today we have the New York Islanders. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get into it. So the Isles were a team that were just able to make it to the playoffs last year. It looked like the late losing streak that they had where it was like six games or something like that could have been their downfall but instead they were able to make it to the postseason yet again and now we're going to be talking about some storylines that could factor into what we're going to see with this club going forward in this upcoming season the first one is what are you going to get with Bo Horvath or will he have a bounce back now Bo obviously ended up getting a very nice extension very thoughtful of Lula Marillo as he got a eight-year 68 million dollar deal as he was traded over to the Islanders and this all kind of stems from the Isles having some offensive issues and you know this is something we've talked about for a while now and they went out and traded for Horvat, who was just on an absolute heater to start the season had 31 goals in his first 49 games played all with Vancouver but I will say this that was not the whole story I think 20 of those goals came like really early in the year cooled off a bit and then things really seemed to cool off a lot and his stretch with the uh, Islanders ended up putting up 18 points in 36 games so you're kind of worried a little bit if you're a Long Island fan that maybe he is not the guy you're hoping he'd be well, what exactly is Bo? Well, Bo was one of their best face-off guys last year and is going to be one of their primary offensive options for this club. And we know that. Is he going to be the guy that is going to go out there and give you a 40-goal season? Not in my opinion. No, I don't think so. Looking at what he did with the Canucks, that is not the norm as a Canucks fan. I can tell you that right now. We did not expect a 40-goal season. We didn't expect a 35-goal season. And, you know, some years you might not even be expecting a 30-goal season or anything like that. For Horvath, I think the thing is just going to be getting back to helping the team out in any way possible. And also, again, trying to break out of that slump a little bit. The good news is looking at him... He ended up playing pretty well with Matt Barzell, ended up outscoring teams 9-2 um, when they played together last season, and that is a good thing because he's projected to play on Barzell's line, and I talked about that in my season preview with the, or my series preview in the first round of the Islanders Hurricane series about if Barzell could be out, how that could impact Bo, and so that could be a good thing for him to be able to go forward and get something going there. The only problem that I do worry about there five of those goals that they were able to score together were on the power play in just like 20 minutes of action so you know four to two at five on five tough to see how that's going to work out there but again if they're paired up on the power play maybe they can get things clicking a little bit for Bo as you really do not want him to have a slow start the second thing here is whether or not the power play can improve because if you followed the islanders at all last year especially as you approach the playoffs you just heard constantly about how the team's power play was stuck in the mud. Looking at the Isles, they were third worst, I believe, in the regular season for power play percentage. Not a great spot to be if you are a playoff team. And I know, obviously, it's going to be situational and they do play a brand that has allowed them to have success without a lot of offense. But when you're a man up or you have multiple men out on the ice where you are the team that has all those extra attackers, you got to make teams pay. Islanders weren't able to do that last year and looking at the club there are some weird things that stuck with me here they had one of the league's best goals for percentage in the NHL when it came to getting power play goals um, when things were tied so obviously it matters a lot there but they also had one of the league's worst goals for percentages on the main advantage when they were leading games it was nine to four so that was kind of weird now again you know if other teams are you know getting desperate and it's late in the game maybe they explain some of it but in general i look at this and a few things stick out to me here the biggest one being it really doesn't matter goals for percentage i think is more indicative of the things like five on five where you get a lot of more numbers there and that's just not going to be the case where on the power play there's not as much time another thing that stuck out to me here was the total number is so much more important than the goals for percentage because again with the islanders not scoring a lot of goals if you were to go out there and you were a whole team an individual team and you scored one goal opposed to another team scoring zero goals on the power play when you're on the power play for the whole season your goal score percentage is going to be 100 percent now if you have a team like colorado that is a different team than the team that scored one power play goal here in allow one and you're the abs and you scored you know 43 
power play goals or whatever it is at the end of the year and you allowed 10. Your goals for percentage is going to be worse. Guess what? You're a lot more dangerous still on the power play because you're able to find the back of the net way more often. And I talked a little bit about, you know, the Devils in the other season preview and they could improve the power play. They don't need to as much. You know, they finished near the top 10 in power play percentage last season. The Islanders do need to be a lot better. This is one of their ways that they're going to find offense where they need to find offense and help themselves out. Now, how could it get improved a little bit? I can't really tell you. Maybe Bor Horvat uh, is able to go out there and have a good year for them. He had 12 power play goals last season. The Islanders' next leader was Anders Lee and I believe Brock Nelson. They each had six apiece. Now, one of those power play goals with Horvat came when he was with Vancouver. But like I said in the first part of this, with Horvat having a turnaround, pairing him with Barzell, or just figuring out what to do for him and the team could very well be part of the solution for the just issues they've had on the main advantage. I don't think things went particularly well against Carolina in the first round when they had the power play. So in general, just getting better. Are they going to be a top 10 unit in the NHL next year when it comes to power play percentage? No, they're not. If they did, I would be shocked. But, you know, even if they were lower 20s or, you know, higher teens, that would be a lot better for them. And just clicking when they're in the playoffs would be ideal. But we will see here because... Power play can be so weird where you get in these weird slumps or you can get on these big heaters. Now, the third thing would be, will Lule Murillo end up making some bad decisions if the team starts off slowly? Now, Lou is clearly a guy that's been able to do a lot in the NHL in terms of his career and his achievements and is definitely a guy that's loved by the New Jersey organization. But obviously, you know, things with the Islanders are interesting because he has given New York the best period of hockey that they've had probably since the early 80s where they were winning Stanley Cups um, and now they're at a spot where it kind of feels like they're stuck maybe a little bit. Now Lou has not been a guy that's been shy about trading away players to give out big long-term deals um, to trade away prospects to trade away picks whatever the case may be and now he's at the point of his career where you kind of wonder where this ends. He's in his 80s I believe he's 80 years old the first GM to be 80 in the NHL, if I'm not mistaken, and has got, I don't know how many years left on his deal. I think he signed an extension uh, this summer. I can't remember, but the point remains that obviously he's going to be in charge of the Islanders through this season unless things go horrifically wrong. He's also a guy that has to have things every bit his way. I mean, guys have to have hairstyles that are a certain way. Uh, they can't wear above a certain number. He's very old school and very controlling. And obviously, he's a guy that has a lot of weight attached to his name because of what he's been able to achieve. So my biggest worry for Lou is if this club gets off to slow start with him realizing there's not too many kicks of the can left as a GM. Um, him making some really, really short-sighted decisions that do not benefit the team in the long run. I don't exactly know what those decisions would be made, but I said in my original video when the audio was bad, I was comparing Lou to a captain of a ship that on the outside looked relatively good and it had given the people at a village a lot of great moments and they love the ship and they think that this captain is a really good captain. However, what we don't realize is that this captain has kept things looking good on the outside and did produce some good results early on. But at the same time, the inside of this ship is looking pretty rough. He wants to keep this ship looking good and the villagers happy and give the captain, a new captain, the ship and just see things maybe probably not look so good in the future. So the villagers can be like, that captain's terrible and I, I don't like that captain. Lou was a good captain. Terrible analogy, but with the Islanders and the fishermen, I kind of went there with it. I know that Lou probably wants things to be positive where they are making the playoffs and they are making runs. But at the same time, he has to understand that this team is still going to be a team in the upcoming few decades, whereas he probably won't be a GM within five years. So I just hope that he understands, let's leave this organization in a good spot for when I am done with the club. But I'm hoping that they don't get off to a bad start because, holy cow, I think Lou could get a little crazy with it. So what are my final overall thoughts for the Islanders? Personally, I think this team is right in a spot where they won't be terrible and they won't be great. And that is probably okay. They've given out their money, they've got money on the books, and they've got to worry about staying relatively competitive with this group because 
Help's not coming from the outside. There's not going to be any top-end picks. They haven't drafted in the first round since 2019. I think they've got three first-round draft picks since 2018 that they ended up selecting. Uh, the prospects aren't anything that people are overly excited about. Just a lot of the same stuff that I talked about last season for this team before he gave Bo Horvath that extension. Crazy to me to the, he gave him that big of a deal for that long. But again, trying to fix the offense could be part of this. And in general, I say that if Sorokin plays well and is healthy and the blue liners that obviously don't have those big, big names uh, that some other teams do end up playing well and they just play their brand of hockey and, you know, Barzell has a good year. The Islanders very well could be in the thick of it for the playoff hunt. They just cannot have those longer losing streaks like they had that six-game losing streak um, towards the end of the year. But yeah, all in all, the Islanders are not going to be a bottom five team this year. If they were, I'd be shocked. But at the same time, if they were top five in the standings, I think I'd be shocked as well. So anyway, what are your thoughts on the Islanders? I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody, please stay safe. Have a great night. And you love hockey, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.